Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel, nice to see you again. Okay, so I've kind of already filmed this bit, but today's video is going to be about the discus tank and more specifically planting it. So I'm trying to make it look semi-nice after the disaster it was and you'll have seen that in a previous video. But uh, either my fat fingers went in the wrong place or I don't know what happened. So you've missed the part where we get to this stage. If we bring you up to speed, what we've done is we've taken uh, all the rocks that were already in there, cleaned them up. And um, you saw me do that in the last video. I've saved the plants that were worth saving and I've added some more plants from other tanks that I've got in the house. So I've got a, a small fish room in the garage. One of those tanks I used to keep plants in and grow them on. So I've taken some of them and put them in this tank here. As well as rearranging the rocks, we've added some aquatic substrate. Uh, we've got a big bag of Eco Complete. So I've had two of these 20 pound bags and what I've done is arranged the rocks and filled in the Eco Complete in between the kind of gaps and in some areas to give a more fertile area to, to pot out some more plants in. Obviously this is a discus tank and one of the biggest concerns when you're planting a discus tank is the temperature of the tank. So discus like it hot, they like to run hot. Um, it's kind of 29 degrees in there at the moment. A lot of plants just can't handle that. So you will see, um, often suggested in the warmer plant packs, it's things like crypts, Amazon swords, that sort of thing. A lot of the, the stem plants I find tend to not do brilliantly. I have had some luck with Rotala before, um, so I have got some more of that coming. Um, but in there we've just got various crypts, Anubias, um, Amazon swords, we've got some uh, Vals, Valsinaria at the back. Um, they are ones that I've had success with in the past, so they haven't always worked, but they've kind of worked um, more often than not, shall I say. So I've got to this point where we're at at the moment, and it doesn't look too bad. If we take a look through this, um, I kind of like the way the rocks are laid out, and I kind of like the way the, the plants are there, but as you can see, there's just far too many blank spaces. So what I did was, I'll go for a little bit of diversity, got some different crypts. So I went to my local pit shop and picked up these. Um, it's the Tropica plants. It was rubbish with the name, so I actually let you read the names at your leisure. Um, but a kind of a grass, so we've got some sedge. We've got some um, more crypts. So I've got about six, pack, six packs of these with various types in here. Um, Mainly these are mainly crypts in this dwarf sag. Um or I don't even know if that is the dwarf variety. But a few of these to fill in some of those gaps that we've got there. So I was about to start filming this, me putting them in there, when another box arrived. Um, and it seems I've also, late at night possibly, well inebriated, been on Aquarium Gardens, a, a, a website I've used many times before to get plants from. And these have arrived. So again, another couple of crypts in there. These are Crypt Coscop. Can't even read that. Costato. Um, really healthy looking from where they are at the moment. So we've got a couple of them, a couple of different ones. And I think they're all crypts, but a red one there as well. A couple of different varieties there. So that will also help fill the gaps. I have also, um, from eBay, ordered a couple of giant Anubias, or not necessarily giant, but well um, mature shall we say, so they should be quite big. And the idea was that I was going to fill in some of these corners pieces so they would be out at the sides. Because crypts, again, I'm not an expert on this, so I'm definitely no aquascaper or plant expert, but what I've noticed is if you put the crypts in the full light, they don't tend to do as well, so they'll probably burn rather than uh, grow. So they're not a very fast growing plant anyway, which is why I wanted the mature one, so I could get some size in there. So I'm thinking I'll put them off to the corners in each end um, hopefully give them a little bit more shade and that might help them continue to prosper, shall we say. So, with all that said, you've got your general plants that work with discus, the heat, as well as all the other water provinces you want to take care of. The heat is the main one uh, and these are the plants that I've got to play with. I'm sure they won't all work, um, but I'd like to try it. So I'm going to put these in. We don't have the Nubius and we don't have the Rotala that I'm going to put in after that. The Rotala, I think, will go in this kind of empty middle section. I can have a, a kind of bushy bit shooting up there. Just wanted to talk about the reason I'm doing this is essentially I got bored of the old one. Um, obviously it got disgusting in the end, but I do like to change up things maybe once every year, especially for a display tank like this. 
It's not such a massive upheaval as some people make out. I have changed the substrate in here before. I've kind of gone halfway with this one just by adding new substrate and kind of making planting pods and planting areas to put in the plants. Still keeping the sand. I've chosen not to cap it off, but I may change that. I just, I don't know. I kind of like the look that we've got at the moment. I'm under no illusions that the black Eco Complete will start to leach into the sand over time as fish get in there and dig around and kick things about. I'm kind of fine with that and we'll deal with that as it comes along. Um, like I say, I didn't really take out any of the sand, just moved it around and then created these areas that we've got in here. So with that said, let's crack on. So the first job before we get started really is to get all the plants out, especially the ones that come uh, planted with the, the rock roll in them. So you'll get something like this. You just have to gently tease it out of the pot. And then you get this kind of bunch of rock roll around here. If you're lucky, it splits off nice and cleanly like that. If not, you're going to have to pick at it for a while. So just have to go through and then you'll notice here when I've done that you can see at least one to three individual plants there have come out of that one pot. So I'll go around and I'll get ready with the rest of the plants and then we'll start sticking them in. I've got them all laid out with my little special tweezers ready to plant and that's just the box of rock wool. I think there's a... can you reuse rock wool? I don't know. Anyway, let's get this in the aquarium. So all the plants that we're working with today are all um, potted plants, so with, with roots that you would plant in the substrate. Um, Java ferns, one that I've tried in the past which has been less than 50-50 successful when I've tried to care for it, um, but that's a type of plant where you wouldn't plant that because it's got its rhizome and you need to keep that out above the substrate. Um, the Anubius that's in here, that's that type of thing. So we do have some Anubias in here that I've taken from other plants that's attached to bits of rock or bits of wood. The new ones, when they come, we'll probably attach them to the large rocks at either side. So it's really just a little bit about trial and error. Picking a plant, kind of standing in front of the tank, having a look at it, visualise it for a while, say, where do you think that might look good from the, the angles that you're going to be looking at it? Taking it in, putting it in, doing that over and over again, taking a step back, be happy with what you've got there. So for instance, this big plant here, I did have over in this uh, location, but it, it just didn't look right. I can't explain why, I guess it's just a personal thing. But when I moved it into this location, just nestled in with the, the rocks and the wood either side, it just looks a lot better. So I'll go through this process, we'll get these all platted in, take a couple of looks, make sure we're happy, and then it should be as simple as that. I'm not going to use any more root tabs. I do have some root tabs in here already. Um, when I did add the Eco Complete, I added that basically jug by jug. So I'll fill up a jug with Eco Complete, lower it in, and pour it where you want it to go. It worked pretty well and didn't really cloud up the water too much at all. I did all this with the fish in. Um, so the fish were in the tank while I was doing this. Play that by ear. I think hey, my fish are particularly docile, or they're used to me being in and out of the tank. So they might come up and have a few pecks at me thinking I've got some food, but otherwise they kind of ignore what's going on. It doesn't seem to stress them out or anything. Right, so I think we've done for now um, until we get the big plants and the Rotala. If it turns up and it's the right stuff, we'll get that in as well. But I think we're kind of good to go. But this day have kicked up a load of meh. So a good time as any to ask you to click that subscribe button. Make sure you don't miss any future videos. And should we go and have a look at the new Mabu puffer while we wait for this to clear? And I can talk to you about that for a second. So, down in the fish room, let's have a look at this little guy down here. This little guy is my Mabu puffer. As you can see, it's still quite a small little Mabu puffer. Um, but we'll see if he'll have something to eat. He's just in this tank for now, so lots of people are going, Oh my god, you can't keep a puffer in that size, whatever. It's just a quarantine tank. Um, just to make sure he gets all fattened up. He's working his way through any snails and shrimp that were left in the tank. But he's already pretty awesome. He's quite... Um, he's, well, he's not shy, let's put it that way. He's usually straight up to the glass whenever I come in. I like the mono brow. Um, but if you head over to my community page, you'll notice that there's a poll there looking for a name for this guy. And I need your help or I'm in danger of calling him Puffy. Because that was what my daughter wanted to call him. 
Um, so head over to the community tab, cast your vote. Um, there's been lots of new names suggested within that vote. So I don't know, maybe we'll do like a World Cup style rundown if people can handle that amount of polls. But anyway, let's give this guy something to eat. And doesn't mind me filming. Yeah, he's quite a good eater. Um, he's had a go at everything I've put in so far. Sometimes he doesn't like. Doesn't seem to take to the prawn. He just kind of bit, bit it a couple of times and kind of went, what the hell is this you're giving me? I want my muscles. Um, so I'm going to try it a few more times because prawns are obviously easier. But I need to be able to get them onto other foods because we want to get them onto clams and things like that when he gets a bit bigger. So I don't want him getting stuck with just one type of food. But he's an awesome little guy. So anyway, help me out with a name. What do you think? Is he a Keith? Is he a Puffy? Is he Apu the Mabu? That was my favourite. Although I do quite like Keith as well. Look at that fan. The tail fanning out there. Yeah, so help me out. What can we call him? What can we call him? Leave you to enjoy that, buddy. And we'll go and see how the tank's doing upstairs. So it's still a little bit cloudy. Well, not cloudy, but just particles in the water being kicked up. They'll give it a bit longer to settle down, but you can tell they're interested, so let's give them some food. I've got here some frozen brine shrimp. It's the stuff that comes in the big slabs rather than the, the packets, the blister packs, so it's, it's better quality, as in more shrimp, not just water. Um, so with these guys at the moment, I'm quite liking doing this. So, leave you with a bit of a feeding. And we, ow! <laughs> that will get bit me. And then we shall put on, or take some film off them. To finish off, as always, like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. We'll see you in the next one.